For the record, never played Magic whatsoever. <laughs> I've never even looked at a Magic. The only actual exposure to Magic, I don't know if you watched South Park, but they did a video or an episode on <laughs> Magic the Gathering. Yeah, no, I haven't watched it. It's very funny. One of the one of the most ridiculous things they've ever done, but I was <laughs> laughing the entire time. Today we're gonna do the opposite, right? You're gonna have to guess how good a Magic card is. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. And I know you haven't played Magic. Um, at all, so some key differences from Magic to Hearthstone. Uh, the first one is you never attack a minion, so you never attack a creature directly, right? You always attack your opponent and they choose to block or not. The second big difference is that damage is temporary. So in Hearthstone, if like a 2-2 fights a 5-5, the 5-5 becomes a 5-3. In Magic, it goes back to being a 5-5 next turn. So if you want to kill a creature, you have to deal all the damage in one turn. Okay. Uh, and the third big difference is that in Hearthstone you get one mana crystal every turn. In Magic that's not true, in Magic you have cards that are lands, uh, and then you have to play these lands, and they are basically mana crystals, but you're not guaranteed to have one a turn, you have to draw them. So in Magic if a card costs 11, you're usually not gonna play it until turn, you know, 18 or 20, uh, if you have no acceleration, because you're just not gonna have drawn 11 land cards by turn 11, naturally. Oh, God. So yeah, th th those are I think the, the big key differences, and then we can talk about certain uh, specific differences as we I show you the cards. Sounds good. One more question: How many cards do you draw at the start of the game? You draw seven, uh, and you you have you can do as many mulligans as you want, but each mulligan you have to put a card back. Oh, that's really that's a cool mechanic. Wow. So you can mulligan specific cards, right? You mulligan the whole hand or nothing at all. So you shuffle your seven back, you draw a new seven, and you put one in the bottom of your deck. Then you, you can shuffle that back again, draw a new seven, put two in the bottom of your deck. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay. So the first card that I'm going to show you is this one. How do you pronounce that? Lano War? Yeah, Lano War Elf. Lano War Elf. So the you need one green land to, to cast this, right? Oh yeah, I guess that's another uh, relatively big difference <laughs> that you're not constrained by your colors, right? In Hearthstone, you're gonna be a Paladin or a Warlock. In Magic, there are five colors, you can play as many of those as you want, but you need the specific mana, right? So if your deck is only green, you'll have no problem playing this card on turn one, because all your lands will be green. But if your deck is five colors, it might be hard oh, to play this really card cool. on turn one. For deck building purposes, you could put as many colors as you want, but majority of the time you want to focus on like one or two, I would imagine. I would say two and three are the most common because there are a lot of special lands that add multiple colors. Okay. Right. So you, you, like if you have a deck that is just red and green, you can have like 20 or 16 lands that add either red or green. Like if you're playing okay. this card, you're going to have to assume that you have the ability to cast it on turn one. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense. For this card specifically, what is the like rotating arrow? Like refresh? This is a tap ability. It means it's an ability that you can use once per turn, basically, in lieu of attacking or blocking. And this ability basically says, instead of attacking or blocking this turn, I'm gonna use this ability. And it generates a green mana, which basically makes it function as a forest. It's a one one yeah, okay. creature that you can, each turn you can turn into a forest temporarily. And then next turn it goes back to being a one one, they can turn into a forest again. Okay, so Lana War Elves cost one green mana. And then like you said, you could either, so this, this card could also attack and defend, but you could also just use the ability to get another green mana and it's a one one. Yeah, it is a one one. Let's just imagine you did seven cards in your opening hand that you would probably get one green mana to play this. Decks have like 24 to 26 lens most of the time. So it's pretty rare to not have one mana. I would probably imagine in a greenish deck that this card would be pretty useful. This is a one one that you can play on turn one that basically gives you another mana. That seems like it's pretty decent. I think like in from a Hearthstone perspective, this is like giving yourself a mana back and that would be very, very powerful. So I would say this is pretty good. All right, yeah, you were correct. It is pretty good. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I was I was thinking that maybe you'll get this wrong because there is a Hearthstone card that's kind of similar, right? I think it's like a two cost two, three. And while it's in play, you get a mana crystal, but if it dies, it's taken back. Yeah, Isn't yeah. And this card is not very good in Hearthstone, right? I think if this card was in Hearthstone as a one mana one, one, this actually might see play. Just okay. for the extra mana on turn one. Depending on what the mana cost of this card would be, this card would probably not see play at two or three, but one probably, yeah. Yeah, no, this card is, is quite good because again, you can't just attack your opponent's minions, right? So you just don't put this in combat if you don't want it to die. Yeah. Uh, and then like it accelerates and you get to play a three cost card on turn two or a four cost card card on turn three or, or both. This is like what ramping is. Yes, this is basic. Magic. Yes, this is ramping. This okay. is, okay. if it lives, it's wild growth. Okay, this is insane then. Yeah, it's very good. 
It's a centerpiece of a lot of green aggressive decks when it's being legal. It's being legal on and off in different formats because there's rotation and stuff. But this is like one of the most iconic green cards. Like this is green's thing. Green does this, other colors don't get to do this. Oh my gosh. Let's go. I can't believe I got it. <laughs> you did. Good job. <laughs> It's getting, I, I imagine each card's gonna get worse, but we'll, we'll go. What is the skull in the top right? That's a different color of mana. That's a black mana. Okay, Lord of Extinction, green and black, and then you also have to have three other mana of any color to play it. Yeah, so this can be three okay. red, a green, and a black, or, you know, two green, three black. This is also a creature. Lord of Extinction's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your all graveyards. So graveyard is basically if a card is used, it goes to the graveyard. If your creature dies, it goes to the graveyard. If you play a spell, it goes to the graveyard. Okay, wow, this is an interesting card. This uh, this is dynamic in the sense that if you play this on the board and a card goes to the graveyard, it gets plus one, plus one. Yes, when you play it, it's gonna be as big as the number of cards in both graveyards. And then and if anything dies, it gets bigger. Oh my God. Wow, this is a really scary card. And Hearthstone, if this card was in the game, this card would be very powerful if you left it on board. The fact that it doesn't have any other text though, it's just a big stat line, it's a little iffy. Not knowing other context of like magic cards and how powerful effects can be, I don't know how great big stat lines are, but the fact that this can keep on growing for every single card you use is very powerful. Especially because it's for both players' graveyards. That has to be nuts. By the time you play this, this has to be a decent amount of stats. Especially if you're putting this into a deck, this would have to be pretty good. But is it actually good enough to see play? This card is going to teach me a lot about how magic works to see if big <laughs> stat lines are good. I would say this is probably about average to weak. I, I don't, again, I don't know how strong just big stats are in magic, but from a Hearthstone perspective, this card would have to be, like, you'd have to put this card down pretty fast for it to actually be useful. So I'd go with, like, average to bad. Okay, close. It's actually just pretty bad. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it is quite big, right? A lot of the time you play this is a 5 cost 10-10, which is quite big and it can grow even bigger. Like sometimes it's a 20-20, right? And you players start a 20 life. It's just lethal in one hit. But it's just very hard to get it through because it doesn't have any combat abilities. It doesn't have any protection, any effects. Uh, and people can just block, right? If you attack with your 20-20, they can just block with their Lenore Elves and then you don't deal any damage to them. So big stats and magic aren't good then because you could just block it with a really small minion consistently. Well, depends. There can be big stats that are good, but they usually come with like a different ability. All right, new card. Ooh, all right. Traumatize. So two blue mana and three any other mana. This is a sorcery spell. Target player puts the top half of his or her library rounded down into his or her graveyard. What is the library? It's your deck. Oh, interesting. If you have 40 cards in your deck, it, it's basically discard the top 20. Wow, this is a really cool mechanic. Okay. So this has a lot of pros and cons. If you are if you know a lot of your deck is just lands and you don't need any more lands, this is a very good card. Because then on average, you get more powerful effects the later the game goes, you would hope. This is also a huge risk because half your deck is quite a bit. This card seems like you'd put into a very sp particular deck, and I would imagine, based on the last card as well, there's a bunch of cards that interact with how many cards are in your graveyard. So just, just to be clear, this is target player, so you can use yours or in, in yourself or them. Oh, right, right. Oh yeah, oh my God, that's actually really interesting too. Wow, this is a really cool card. This has to be very, very powerful. I'm gonna go with it's insane. Okay, actually, it's pretty bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. The key is that in Magic, so in Hearthstone, if you're playing like a control battle or something, everything, things go to decking a lot, right? You draw your entire deck a lot. In Magic, you have 60 cards and you play four of each card. So like there's no, you know, I'm going to snipe your one Alexstrasza and now you can't kill me anymore. And given that people start with 60 cards, games very rarely go to decking. In yeah. the end, like you can look at this as, you know, instead of taking the top 20 cards of their deck, you remove the bottom 20 cards of their deck, which they would never get to anyway. You know, it's even funny. You know, I'm actually like re actually really sad. I got this wrong because here I'm going to like this. is This is a card in Hearthstone. That is the, the exact line you just said about thinking about just removing the bottom five cards of your opponent's deck is the exact same thing for this card. Like it can be good, but people hated this card because of the effect that it had. But it seems so much better than it actually was. And what you just said reminded me so much of it. I don't know why I got this wrong. You're right. <laughs> this traumatized card and it evokes a lot of emotions too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good way of putting it, right? People have very yeah. strong feelings about it. All right, next card. 
Brainstorm. So this is just one blue mana and it's instant. So instant is you can cast it during combat, right? During combat and during their turn. So you draw three cards and then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So you're drawing three and then putting two back, but you get to choose the way that you order the draws and you get an, so you get an extra card as well. This, like, this card could do a lot. If you need like a potential removal immediately, maybe you can get it from this. This is a very versatile card. This has to be like at least decent. I can, I can imagine that this is a card that you would want to put it into maybe not even a particular deck. It just seems like generally this is a very good card. So I would say this is probably decent to good. I wouldn't say it's like mana breaking or anything or like broken, but it seems like it's a pretty decent card. Yeah, this is actually one of the best cards in the game. <laughs> uh, it is very, very strong. So there is a format called Vintage, and there's a format where you can play almost any card, and it's called Legacy. Like, it's only excluding, like, the super busted ones. And this is arguably the best card in Legacy. Oh, wow. And the reason this is so good is because in Magic, there are a lot of ways to shuffle your deck. So what you do is you play this, you draw three, and you put your two worst cards back, and then you shuffle your deck and you don't have to draw them again. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that makes it even better. Yeah, that makes sense. And you can even just hide your card from this card sometimes, right? There, there are some cards that, Minion, that you showed me last time where it devours the highest costing card in your opponent's hand or something. Yeah. Uh, if they play something like that, I can play Brainstorm and put my Alexstrasza on top. So now it's not in my hand anymore. And, oh, that's really and good, then I'm gonna, yeah, But I'm um, gonna draw it next turn because it's the top card. Yeah, in Hearthstone, this card would be insane. Cruel Ultimatum. Holy moly, this cost a lot of mana. So this is two blue, three black, and two red. Target opponent sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, loses, then loses five life. You return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, draw three cards, and then gain five life. Does sacrificing like mean anything else besides just killing the creature? You kill the creature, but they choose. So they, okay. they choose one of their creatures to die. They only have one, you kill that. If they have two, they choose one of the two. I'm so scared now because the last card wasn't flashy <laughs> at all. It was so good. This one looks like it, it's so flashy. How, okay, sacrificing a creature from like your opponent gets the pick, it has to be at least decent. Discarding three cards seems very good. But again, like you said, lands are usually not as good later in the game. And this card seems like it's pretty expensive. So discarding lands doesn't seem too bad. And then they lose five life. Five life is a decent amount of life in magic because you only have 20. So that seems decent. Then you also get the huge benefit of returning a creature from your graveyard, which can be very good. Maybe even like a combo deck. This is very strong. I feel like this card's good. I don't think again, it's like meta breaking or anything, but this effect feels like it's very powerful for what it is. This is a, it seems like a huge tempo swing. Even if like your opponent discards three lands and sacrifices their worst creature and loses five life, that's like negligible because the effect that you're getting seems very good but the it is a very expensive card so is this card worth that amount of mana that's the only question that's in my head so i'm gonna go with like it's average but it can be very powerful yeah i think that's a pretty good description of it like this card <laughs> has seen play you know in, in certain decks it is very restrictive right because as you said it costs a lot of mana and a lot of specific mana uh so it's seen play in like some control decks that are using it as sort of a finisher I don't think it was like super meta breaking or anything because this card, this deck could just have played something else instead, but it was a good card in this deck specifically. So next card. Chomano? That's how you say it? Chomano? Yeah, right. Chomano, Chomano. <laughs> I'm not, not an English speaker, so. So this is uh, two white and two of any mana, legendary creature. Yeah, so what this means is that you can only have one in play at the same time. So you can put up to four in your deck if you want, but if there's one in play, you basically can't play the other. So is this effect always active or can you like, can you choose to use this or not? It's always active. So oh. basically a way of looking at this is like, it's a two infinity instead of a two, two. This can't die from creature combat, I guess. It has to die from an effect from a spell or you have to sacrifice it or something. Yes. In magic, you could use a minion to block any minion, which is, this looks like if you're just going against minions, this is a very powerful card because it's just infinitely just stopping damage to go to your actual like face. It only blocks one though, right? To, to be clear, like if they attack with three things, it can only block one. But it, it always blocks the one creature indefinitely, right? Like it can go from turn to turn, always blocking one individual creature, but the other two creatures in the sense would attack face, right? Yes. It is a two, two. So two infinite is like you said, two attacks seems a 
pretty decent for how much this mana act or how much this card actually cost. This is a card that like your opponent has to deal with at some point, just because if you're blocking that much damage like this, this starts to scale real fast and you could block like a 20 attack creature if there's that one in the game and this card still lives like that seems very good. Oh my God. OK, this I feel like inside my mind, this is a bait like this. But <laughs> it seems good. I have to go with this card. It's probably good. Like it just it seems like blocking a minion a turn feels like it's very powerful and it feels like it could delay the game enough for you to actually get to whatever you need to win the game. So in that sense, I think it's good. You were right. It was bait. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good. The problem with this is that like there are a ton of ways to deal with it that don't involve damage exactly like a bunch of spells. And a lot of the creatures that you would want to block have ways of bypassing it. So the good ones, they all have evasive abilities. Like they have trample, which would go through. Uh, they have flying, which means you can't block. Oh, right, so, yeah. So in the end, like and you, you said like two, two, two attack is good for the cost, but this is effectively, this costs four. Damn it, man. I even, <laughs> you're baiting me. Uh, so next card. Death Shadow. You need one black mana. It is a creature. It is 1313. Death Shadow gets minus X minus X for X is your light. Oh, wow. So at the start of this game at 20 life, this is a zero zero. Yeah. So you need to lose seven health for this card to actually be playable at a zero zero. Yeah. It, you need to be at 12 for you to be a one one. As you take more life, I'm guessing that this card gets strong or lose more life. This card gets stronger, just like the other effect. Yes. So this so is dynamic you, on the board. Yeah. And to give you a little bit of context, this is a black card and like black is relatively close to Warlock in okay. the sense that a lot of the cards have like pain points. So there are some okay. ways where you can deal damage to yourself for profit. So this is a very cheap card, but like you said, you need to actually damage yourself to actually play it. So. This is a one mana card, but you're not playing this until you have a D. Hmm. So this is this is a card that you want to play a little bit later in the game. Also, by the time you play this, if you're only at 12 life, a one one doesn't seem very powerful. The way I'm going to look at this is like how fast can you cheat this card out to, for it to actually be good? And if you can cheat it out to be good, like very early in the game, this card can be incredible. But again, like you said that you, you could just block like a big minion. This doesn't have any effect or anything. So this like, I think this is just bad then, right? Final answer. Yeah, I'm going to go with it. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go with this bad. <laughs> no, it's actually good. Oh, come on. <laughs> but it's very context dependent because it's a card that has existed for a long time and it wasn't good for a long time. Right. And then as more cards got released that interacted favorably with it, it became better. Like there are some lands you have to pay life to play them. So like you can pl play your land, you take two damage, then you discard your card, you take two damage and like very quickly you are at a point where this becomes a little bit bigger uh, yeah. and it costing just one mana you're right that you're not going to play this on turn one right you're going to play this on turn four or five but then these decks are full of cheap interactive spells so like you can play this for one mana it's a four four right and then you still get to do some other stuff that same turn it's too early in the game where you have a lot of cards in your hand and then it grows into a six six or a seven seven uh which for just one mana can be pretty strong so you need a critical mass of cards that work with this for it to be good enough. Okay. Yeah, you, you, sense. yes, you need good ways of damaging yourself. Bane Slayer Angel. Flying first strike and lifelink on a 5-5 five five that costs five mana as long as you have two white as well. Hmm. Okay, so this is obviously good against demons and dragons. If you think you're going to go against that type of creature, then this is very strong already. Without knowing how powerful flying is, it's probably good. First Strike seems very strong in this type of game. If I'm playing five mana for all of these effects in Hearthstone, this card's very good. So you need two specific white mana, but you're probably going to put this into a deck where you have the, like enough white mana for this to actually see play at five, even potentially earlier, depending on how many lands you draw. This, I think this is good. This, this seems like it's a pretty good effect. It's like basically a five five with a bunch of benefits. And the fact that you're healing a quarter of your life every single time this does damage seems pretty good. So I'd go with it's good. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. It's a good card. Uh, it is very good versus certain decks and not that good versus others. Like if they're playing a control deck, they have ways of just killing it and the life doesn't matter that much. But versus any sort of creature deck, this just stabilizes the game so much. Time warp, two blue and three of any mana. It's a spell. Target player takes an extra turn after this one. Oh my God. <laughs> there is a card like this in Hearthstone. There was a card. 
Uh, it was a quest that you had to complete, and when you got it, it was five minutes to take an extra turn. I didn't know that. I didn't know there was any girl like this in Hearthstone. Basically, if you completed that quest, you would probably win the game the next turn. And this would be the exact same thing. You could tap all your mana, play this card, and then all your mana is untapped again, so you could do a bunch of stuff afterwards. My Hearthstone brain tells me this is insane. But is it bait? I, I think you're baiting me, but I also think this card's good. <laughs> like, if this is a Hearthstone card, I would play this card. I'm going to go with this card's good. I would say this card is good, but not broke or anything. Actually, it has a very interesting story. So the first time this was released, it was an effect that cost two mana. And that was absolutely broken. It was like one of the best cards in the game. It's banned everywhere. Then they reprinted it again. I think it was last year. And it was super good. So they ended up banning this card because of its application in a combo deck. Your card. Eviscerate. One black and three of any color. Destroy target creature. Oh my god, so simple. So without knowing any form of removal in magic, I'm gonna have to just base this probably on more on Hearthstone as well. If I had to spend four mana to remove a card in Hearthstone, I don't think that would see play. We currently have that in the game and it doesn't see play. But with magic, you can also block creatures with minions. So this card gets worse because of that ability. I also don't know how powerful other removals are, which is why this card could be actually just decent. Okay, I'm gonna go with this card's average. I don't, I don't think this would be the best form of removal, but it, it does its job if you need to just remove a creature. Okay, this card is pretty bad. <sighs> it was a bit unfair because you don't have the whole context, right? But the reason this card is pretty bad is because it's very overcosted. Like you can have the same effect for much cheaper, like, I would say that the, the baseline for destroying a creature is like two mana. For four and sorcery, this is just too lackluster. <laughs> I was actually thinking in my head, I was like, this looks like a basic card they would give you the hardest though, just so you can build your deck. It is, it, it is sort of a, a basic card, yes. I was actually going to lean towards it so bad, but I, like, I think you got like, you're in my head after that one card. Wait, but <laughs> it's supposed to be analyze the card, not analyze me. No, it's not you. It's more like <laughs> I, I, I'm looking at the card in a vacuum, but I'm second guessing myself because of the previous experience that I had. Like <laughs> I, I, I traumatized you. <laughs> yeah, you traumatized me. All right, last card. Elite Spellbinder. So this is one white and two of any color. When Elite Spellbinder enters the battlefield, look at your target opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. So wait, hold on, what does exile mean though? So basically the idea is that it's a 3-1 flying for three, and when you play it, you look at their hand and make one of their cards cost two more. So this is actually very interesting because against a very particular deck, this can throw off their combo by quite a bit. And because the way mana works in magic, you could potentially delay their turn by a lot because if they need to find two more lands to cast their whole combo in one turn, this is very powerful. Three mana for a three one that's flying is also decent. This is like, I mean, even in like the early game, this card's fine just because the two more mana on a very cheap card is actually more relevant than on a more expensive card. And you get to look at your opponent's hand. So you get to see every card they have in their hand. Yes. Okay, this has to be like broken. Like this has to be like one of the best cards in the game. So first of all, I'm very disappointed you didn't notice, but this card is known for having one of the best arts in all of Oh, magic. it's you. Yeah. It's you, right? Yes, it is me. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Holy shit, that's so cool. Sorry, I'm so focused on the text. That's actually amazing. They gave you a card. That's awesome. Oh, this is the card you got for winning the world champion. Yes. Jim. Yes, it is. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> wow. Dude, congrats. Did you get to work with them on this card? I did, yeah. Like we there was a lot of back and forth on what like they gave you a bunch of options. I chose this kind of ability. Okay, so then my analysis has to be correct that this card's broken. <laughs> like it's about, <laughs> it's so good. It's not broken, it is good. It is, obviously I'm biased, right? But uh, I think it is a good card. It says a lot of play, uh, even in older formats. And what, what you said is basically correct, right? Like sometimes you just play this on turn three and like they only had one card that cost three to play, right? So you take that away and then their next turn is just nothing because that card now costs five. This card, I would say, is pretty good. It sees a lot of play. That's so cool that your card's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy that it's good. Do they do this every year? They started doing it the year before I won. And then there will be one next year for the for last year's World yeah. Champion. Yeah. So. Uh, you, you won at the perfect time then. I did. 
I did. You're timeless now. That's awesome. <laughs> but anyways, dude, thanks for again for doing this. This is uh, this was really fun. Yeah, it was fun. Maybe if I do end up trying magic, we could try to do this again where you give me more intense magic cards and we'll see how well it does.